This is WWE superstar Drew McIntyre, and you're listening to the WWE Podcast. The one that everybody wants, me. Austin 316 says I just whipped your ass. This is my iron. You're going to acknowledge me. Hey guys, welcome to the WWE Podcast. It's Friday, June 14th. It's a combination episode here of the Mailbag and of Clash the Castle preview and predictions. So we'll get through the Mailbag as quickly and efficiently as we possibly can. Um, and we'll get to those preview and predictions on the back end of the show. But if you haven't joined us, good time to over on Patreon because it gets you an ad-free experience for absolutely everything that we do, except for one show that's exclusive to the SmackDown tier and NX Plus tier and above every other week, and that is the After Dark show that Anthony DeMarco, a adult version of the show that's completed every single week, once a week, for those of you on uh, the higher tiers. And you can also come on the show if you go high enough and uh, lots of other cool little things. So check that out. And uh, there are some, I believe, some new patrons, if I can uh, figure out uh, my app here. Uh, we have Melinda, who joined us. We've got Vanessa Liao. I think that's how I pronounce it. And uh, I think Logan, I already gave you a shout out. But if I didn't, there you go. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. And let's get into the mailbag. And uh, let's see what the patrons have to say this week. And uh, we'll start with we'll start with Logan. And Logan says, when do you think we'll see Seth back? I feel that maybe a face turn is coming for him. And maybe he joins Roman Reigns again. And possibly a Shield reunion, even though Dean Ambrose is in AEW. Uh, I also wanted to say I feel that the Wyatt Six-ish group seems like they might have a violent debut after what happened to Ricochet. Okay, I'll answer this in reverse. I think the Wyatt Six are going to be a babyface group. We have enough, Lord knows we have enough heel factions in WWE. Outside of the LWO, there's not a ton of male uh, babyface factions. So they're, they're in desperate need of some kind of balance. Now, Roman Reigns will have his original crew at some point with Jimmy and Jay reuniting to join Roman to, to take down Solo Sokoa. The Rock will eventually come back, all that. But... For a standalone significant group, this Wyatt Six group or whatever they're eventually called should be a babyface group. And the idea apparently is that they're going to debut this coming Monday, apparently is what I'm hearing. So it may not be a Clash at the Castle. It could be Monday night. And I don't have a problem with that. Makes sense. You know, you kind of clear out the storylines, get ready for Money in the Bank, SummerSlam season, and you make a big impact on Monday Night Raw after Money in the Bank. So I'm down for it. Now, as far as Seth goes, do I? Well, he's already a babyface, so him turning babyface is kind of redundant. But I don't know if he'll join Roman Reigns. They have unfinished business. I have been of the belief that they should have a proper program against one another. But the problem now becomes you have a babyface Roman, a babyface Seth. Uh, you can't really get, and there's no need to really turn either at this point. Roman's got enough on his plate. You know, you could say, well, turn Seth Healy's. It's been a while. Yeah, it has. But Seth as a baby face on Raw has been a lot of fun. He took a break at the perfect time uh, to, to heal his body, get did surgery, whatever he needs to do to his back and his knees. And, um, you know, that, that void of that top baby face role, you know, it'll be filled. But when it comes to Seth Rollins, and and Roman Reigns reuniting. Well, problem also is they're on opposite shows. You now, <laughs> if they're on opposite shows, it's a little bit difficult to do. Even though WWE doesn't give a damn about their own rules, there's just several levels of why that probably wouldn't happen right now. Do I think it's going to happen? Probably. You know, do I think Dean Ambrose is going to come back to WWE? Nah, not not in the next year or two. I'd say you know maybe when his next contract is complete, he'll think about it. Um, you know, obviously the regime is not there anymore with Vince, you know, and, and putting his fingerprints on what he believes Dean Ambrose should be. But, uh, you know, Seth and Roman reuniting, kind of difficult to do. Again, Roman's got his hands full with the bloodline stuff. 
And right now it's all about bloodline stuff, not about the extracurricular. But here, here's the thing. I'll, bottom line is Seth and Roman need to have a proper program. For the love of God, they keep just doing these random one-off interactions. How have they not had a real program with uh, in the last five years? I don't want to hear Royal Rumble 2022. That was an exhibition match that led nowhere. All right, I don't want to hear the interaction at WrestleMania 40. That meant nothing. Um, yeah, you know, I need a proper multi-month program with Roman and, and Seth Rollins. I was pref- I was hoping it would be Roman Reigns as a heel and Seth as Seth as a babyface. That would have been a fun story, but they could go the opposite way too. All right, Logan, thank you. Let's talk to Charlie. He says, "What's up, everybody on, on planet Earth?" And by the way, guys, um, just for the sake of time, if your email is long, I may condense it or not read the whole thing. <laughs> just in the interest of time and making sure everyone has the opportunity and that I have enough time to give you guys my preview and predictions for clash. So uh, just an FYI, but I'm going to do my best. So if it sounds like I'm reading a little fast, like, Hey, slow down. It's because I'm, I'm trying to get through your content. Uh, and I'd prefer that you guys, you know, concise and to the point is my preference, please for emails, please. Okay. Um, so Charlie says, this is Charlie from Milwaukee. It's that time of the month. And no, I'm not talking about the other time of the month. Uh, it's time for another WWE PLE. And with that being said, here are my predictions. You think Jade and Bianca pin either Shayna or Zoe and retain the women's tag titles. And I try to pay attention during their match. After the match with Trish and Lita, after the match, Trish and Lita challenge Bianca and Jade for the titles at Money in the Bank in Toronto. Interesting. Hmm. I, not impossible. They've both been active in the ring. Sammy retains the IC title. I don't, well, actually, here, here's the thing, Charlie. I would also say that's probably not going to happen with Trish and Lita because who, who, what's there to gain here? Trish and Lita would come back to face a heel team to take down some, you know, some nasty heels to face Jade and Bianca, who are just starting to get going as tag team champions. I, I, I would say that's probably not going to happen, but crazier things have happened. Number two, Sammy retains the IC title due to. Uh, Chad's contract expiring last Friday and Otis finally turns on Gable thus setting up Otis to compete in Money in the Bank. Bailey retains against Piper Niven and Charlotte makes a surprise return setting up for Charlotte versus Bailey at SummerSlam. Um, well actually Charlie that can't happen because don't forget Nia Jax won the Queen of the Ring which gives her the right for a championship opportunity at SummerSlam so that can't happen but okay number four Cody Rhodes retains the Undisputed Championship. Uh, Drew McIntyre wins the World Heavyweight Championship. After the match, Drew holds up the belt and Brock Lesnar comes out. This sets up Brock and Drew up Money in the Bank. It's all for now. I apologize. The email is so long. Hashtag I want AJ Lee. Okay, well, uh, thanks, Charlie. I appreciate your predictions. It's hard for me to comment without giving away my own. All right, Warpath. Uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, Warpath. I, I thought you sent me an, e- an email, but that's from a month ago. Um, uh, but, oh, well, Hey, Warpath, you sent me a message. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> That's all you said. <laughs> all right. Let's see here. Um, mailbag question for Friday. What do you got? This is from Jeff T. Jeff T. Jr. He says, first off, huge diehard office fan here. Love it. Yeah. I mean, I have been back on the office train for the last several weeks with my wife and I. It is a show that is infinitely rewatchable. The rewatchability is at a maximum with The Office. It's the same thing with Friends, I think, or Big Bang Theory. I know I'm throwing out some, probably some, some of you that hate those series or feel like they're overblown or overrated. I mean, they're top rated and they're, they're, they're household names for a reason. You know, the rewatchability is very important. And the office is just oh my god, it's it's just great. And here's the thing, even especially for us that work in office environments, it is especially relatable because you can see these things in your own office. Obviously, it's blown out of proportion on the show, but imagining these things actually happening in an office is just it's perfect. The cast was done absolutely to perfection. Who they chose, Rain Wilson, you know. Uh, as Dwight Schrute is, I mean, he might be the star of the show. You know, I mean, I could go on. I, the office is, if, if you've, 
never given the office a try give it a try give it a full season though please i'm begging you the first few episodes are not that interesting it's much more different than a show you've watched before it's a mock humanity so if you have i would recommend going back to it It it's just so much so just perfect it's the perfect show to watch at the end of the day all right with wwe starting to do more and more mixed organization matches who and from what company would you like to see come for a match or two well when you say mixed organization matches, I mean having what New Japan uh, or or TNA or something like that, like uh, with with Jor- or Jordana or was that her name? Jordana uh, Jordana. Am I saying it wrong? Grace Jordan Grace, <laughs> something like that. Um, I mean, like, hey, she was part of NXT or I'm sorry, uh, TNA when she came in at the Rumble. Um, I would say until they actually start talking about you know AEW relationships and potential mixed matches, that I don't have any real interest in seeing any other kind of promo- interpromotional matches. I mean, an AEW WWE mixed interpromotional match would be a hell of a thing. Um, but if someone was to just come exclusively to WWE and they were given a pass from AEW, who would I want? I mean, three letters, three, and you guys can guess what those are, and that's it. MJF, he needs to come to WWE for the love of, love of God. I know a lot of you love he's, and love him in AEW. You think he's perfect, and he is, but he's a big fish in a small pond, and his career is going to hit a ceiling that is in place because you're in a company that is relatively new. It's immature in a lot of ways from talent or rather uh, from management of talent, not the talent themselves. Um, and that, you know, the, the obviously the audience isn't as as big as it is in WWE. So it's MJF. Not even a question. All right. Let's uh, let's go to our next email. That's from Darren. He says, hey, WWE podcast family. I know Clash is next, but I had another thought. Plus, I'm sure everyone will be giving predictions, so I'm going to switch it up. I think it was funny, or I'm funny. I think it was after money in the bank last year that Triple H said, quote, good things come to those who wait regarding LA Knight. It's been almost a year now. I'm not seeing the payoff coming very soon. Do you really think he meant to wait this long or something changed along the way? By the way, I'm declaring myself from the money in the bank match. That's how it works, right? Yes, Darren, and... While you're at it, you might as well declare yourself for the uh, 2025 Royal Rumble. All because it's just like Michael Scott from speaking of the office. You just have to declare it like bankruptcy, and you're good. If you want to declare bankruptcy, you just have to say it out loud. I declare it. <laughs> that's it. You know, um, that's all you got to do. So I look forward to your participation in the match, and best of luck at the Royal Rumble if you declare for that as well. But I don't know if he's. Was he referencing specifically L.A. Knight when he said good things come to those who wait? Because if he was, then, you know, we do have a upcoming Logan Paul and L.A. Knight U.S. title match in which L.A. Knight has a very real chance to beat Logan Paul. In fact, I, I would argue he's the first one to come along since U.S. Uh, since he won the U.S. title. That is the biggest threat to his to his championship and a real case to be made for L.A. Knight to win. LA Knight has not won a major champion, singles championship or any championship, I don't think. I mean, some of you may correct me. I get corrected all the time. But I don't think LA Knight has won a singles title or any title in WWE since he came in. So, but yeah, I mean, it could be that or it could be him winning money in the bank. But I I would imagine that if they're building to the next PLE, which it looks like they're going to, LA Knight's not in the money in the bank ladder match. I know many of us chose him last year to win Money in the Bank, and he didn't, um, which still was a bit surprising, but they went with Damian Priest, and it's worked out. All right. Thanks, Darren. All right. Let's go to AJ from Patreon. He says, been a while. Just wanted to give a moderately hot take, maybe. I don't care about the bloodline stuff. I haven't since Sammy left, and even he's kind of taken a step back. I don't care about the B and C team players. And honestly, I'm only somewhat okay with the Roman and Rock coming back because I don't really find Roman interesting at all. I just want this story to be finished and really hope it's not a Cody Rock at WrestleMania. Give me Orton RKOing the belt off of Dusty's son or maybe even a punt kick. 
P.S. If you have time for a second part, I've been watching the Monday Night War series on Peacock from 2013. And all I can really say is I was not born soon enough because I missed all the best Austin stuff. Um, yeah. Well, when you say from 2013, wait, 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 the Monday Night War series. Oh, I know what you mean. I got it. Um, you need, yeah. I mean, part of it is nostalgia. All of us look back, most of us anyway, if we are a nineties kid or an eighties kid, or even an early two thousands kid, you look back on that era with kind of rose colored glasses, right? Everything felt better. Everything seemed better. And then you go watch it. And sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't with wrestling. It truly was the golden era that will not ever be repeated. Um, the Austin era is it's an, it's a time in which I don't think I've ever felt more emotionally invested in a product movie or TV show in my life. It affected not just wrestling fans, but the mainstream culture. It had record ratings. I mean, you look at the TV ratings during the Monday Night War era. It, it was incredible. Incredible. I mean, it, it, I know that many people don't care about that kind of stuff with the ratings and numbers, but it was it was blow away. Every house show was a sellout. Every TV obviously was a sellout. PLEs or pay-per-views, sellout, 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 sellout for years. And they're raking in the cash. People were buying pay-per-views. At that time, you didn't have the network. You had to go actually call your cable company, Time Warner, Comcast, whatever you had. Sky Sports, I don't know, some of you in the UK or, or rather in Canada, um, you had to go call. And sometimes it was 40 bucks. Sometimes it was 50 bucks, 60 bucks. I've seen 70 to $80 for WrestleMania. And I remember trying to convince my parents to go and buy that. And trying to convince them why it's worth it. Then they had to go put a password into the cable box. And sometimes you'd have issues. You had to call up the cable company. Wait on hold up. Something ain't working. The t- you know, it was a f- effing hassle. I don't know how I got on that trip. But um, the Monday Night War era was a special time. Um, one that will never be duplicated. But uh, back to reality here. And back to the current time. You know what? I don't. I don't think that that's a crazy take. Most people do want Rock back. Most people want Roman back because I think they did a very good job in the build to WrestleMania. Very good. I mean, I, I really enjoyed their stuff. I think the Rock turning heel was better than I could have ever imagined. Am I disappointed? We still have not gotten, and maybe never will get a Rock babyface heel Roman matchup one on one. Yeah, that's almost impossible to fathom that that doesn't happen. It's still feasible and maybe even likely. I would also t- I would side with you that Rock Cody at WrestleMania does not interest me. It doesn't interest me for, for a couple reasons. Number one, that's not the biggest match you can put together. It's just not. Uh, you, want, you want to know a bigger match you can put together right off the bat? Uh, besides even Rock Roman, that's bigger than Cody Roman. I'm sorry, bigger than Cody Rock. How about Rock Brock? I've been beating this drum for freaking years, for probably 10 years now. Both have been physically capable. Now we have both in the company. Brock Lesnar, you know, uh, while he's he's not fired, he he's ready seemingly at any time. And there's no better time. Now, The Rock has apparently injured himself on set, if you didn't hear this. Uh, he had... His elbow is like the size of a cantaloupe. I guess he had some injury while he's filming some um, uh, MMA-inspired film. And it seems like he's going to be okay, but he's got, if you check it out, he's got a massive lump on his elbow. It seems like he'll be okay, and it it shouldn't affect his return in likely a couple months near SummerSlam. But um, I really, really, really don't want to see, at this point in time, compared to other matches we could see, Rock and Cody. You're right. Randy Cody is the better story. There's a built-in story there. There's a built-in story. And also, you know what they're going to do with Rock and Cody? They're going to put over Cody. Of course they are. Of course they are. So it makes it even less interesting to me. So, you know, what I'd like, I'd like a WrestleMania where I don't already know the the main event with Cody Rhodes inside of it. I mean, I for the last every every single WrestleMania that we have had since Cody has returned to WWE, six to twelve months out, we've already known and heard and been confirmed of what that main event is for Cody Rhodes. 
So, I mean, I just, I don't want Rock Cody. I, I, I just don't. Um, now, would I watch it? Yeah, of course I would. Of course I would. But it's it, to me, it's just not the biggest match that you can put together. It's not. I don't need to see it. So, anyway. All right. So, uh, thanks, AJ. Let's go to Freeman. He says, morning. I'm so disappointed. I couldn't afford tickets to see Clash. But after doing a little research, it would cost about the same to fly to the USA to catch a normal Raw. So might have to give myself a holiday at some point and come visit. Yeah, I mean, I feel for you guys when it comes to the, the prices of the tickets you guys have to pay. And it's just, I feel for you. I, and I don't blame you. You got to do what you got to do. That's not cheap. It's not cheap at all. So I think you'll, you won't be too sad about it, though. I mean... Looking at the card, yes, there are some interesting matches. You may get some big payoffs. Maybe Otis turns. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he helps Chad Gable win, and they build to an Otis and Chad Gable IC title match at SummerSlam. That's been some thinking, too. Maybe we don't get payoffs. Maybe the wide six does wait until Monday Night Raw. Maybe Punk doesn't show up. I mean, there, there's a lot of things that could happen here that um, you may not be too sad about missing. Okay, something that has been bothering me for a while. So Jade and Bianca come out to Bianca's entrance theme, the lyrics of which are, quote, I'm on my own against the world, end quote, I never needed you. And I can't help but scream at the TV, uh, no, you're in a tag team, not on your own. Oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. Or is this just setting up for the fact that Jade is bad and is being carried by the best in the business, so she really is on her own? It just doesn't make sense to me. Can you find any logic how Bianca is still on her own? Well, no. Here, it's it's pretty pretty simple to to explain this. They don't want to change her entrance music, and Bianca's entrance music is more over than Jade's is at the moment. So that's what they're going with. I mean, I don't think they're thinking. Many fans are looking too far into this as if it's some kind of actual reality that's happening right now or some kind of uh I, I underlying message i didn't even notice it but it is kind of funny i'm on my own against the world i'm like well you're in a tag team so no you're not right that's a good observation that's a good observation uh all right so um i'm trying to drown out my my child who's crying in the background so i apologize okay uh for one thing i noticed that no one is talking about is how carlito isn't a part of the judgment day the entrance when he comes out is always Carlito and the Judgment Day. So I reckon Carlito isn't banned from ringside and will be the one to cost Priest the title. Punk then appears, just rubs in how he only won because of Carlito's interference and he can't win clean or without the help, thus setting up Punk versus Drew. Okay, well, again, Freeman, this is a astute observation. You, you obviously are picking up on things that I don't because you're smarter than me on that front. Um... But I will say this, that again, I would not in any capacity, I just would not introduce Punk in front of that crowd tomorrow night in Scotland. I just wouldn't do it because you run the very high risk and likelihood that the fans are going to boo Punk out of the building because of their hometown hero. They have Drew McIntyre, who they are going to love and adore and give a hero's welcome to as he deserves. Any any interference with Punk, any appearance by Punk, any any um really anything to do with Punk there, I think could backfire in a big way. I understand that he's a big star, and and Scotland hasn't seen him maybe in I don't know how many decades, but I just don't believe it's a good thing to do unless you don't care or really believe that Punk is going to get a positive reception from that crowd. Again, it's all about location here, and I don't have any faith that Punk is going to get cheered in uh, in Scotland, especially when his main opponent and main program has been with Drew since early April. All right, uh, let's see. So, where? Oh, also, where's Tiffany Stratton on the card on SmackDown? She feels like she's being forgotten, but I want more Tiffy time, and so do many others. But I swear it's only international audiences that like her. She seems to get huge pops across international on the all the international PLEs, but none in the USA. It might just be the crowd energy difference, but I can't think of any time the USA crowd has chanted for Tiffy time. Lastly, just an observation, but it looks like Solo has stolen Roman's red boots, literally stepping into the shoes of the tribal chief. See, another very astute observation, Freeman. Did not notice that. It could be very it could be a symbolic uh, a symbolic uh, gesture. 
and message to the fans that I have not picked up on, but I, you could absolutely be right. Nothing is done by accident. So I think that's a very key observation. Now, Tiffany Stratton, I don't know where she is, but I'm not worried about it. The crowds in the USA have, I mean, the thing is, they're muted anyway. You can't compare USA crowds to international crowds. It's just not fair. You know, the, the, the USA crowds, outside of some of the big markets that are always loud or crazy or the Monday Night Raw for WrestleMania that actually have international fans. So I just think it's usually a, it, 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 I know it is always louder when it go they go overseas because of the energy. They're never there, blah, blah, blah. Right. But Tiffany Stratton has gotten a decent reaction in the USA. You just can't compare it to international reactions because it's not fair. Everyone gets an overbloated reaction overseas. You know, the Brooklyn brawler would Paul Burchill. Remember him? And if anybody knows who I'm talking about, the pirate, <laughs> oh, I'm throwing something out here. Uh, I don't know where I thought of Paul Burchill. Remember, he like swung in on a rope as if he was on a pirate ship. Anybody remember that? I don't know why he didn't last long or like Heidenreich, Mordecai. Y'all know what I'm talking about from like the mid 2000s Smackdown. I'm talking like 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006. Those were the those are the days. Oh man, Eugene. Well, he was on Raw. Anyway, I have I never done a deep dive into Eugene. Anybody? I mean, well, if you watched Raw during, I think it was around 05, uh, 04, 05, when um they brought in Eugene. If you have no idea who Eugene is, and you're like, dude, just who is that? Uh, for YouTube, it it will make your mind explode because WWE was able to get away with a character that was special needs. And I think they got away with it because they presented him pretty respectfully in terms of they, the, first of all, the crowd supported the hell out of him. Nick Dinsmore was the one who played Eugene and he played the special needs wrestler very well. And it was very believable. And it was supposed to be that uh, uncle Eric, who was Eric Bischoff running raw at the time. He was the GM of raw had a nephew that he was ashamed of, and it was Eugene. And Eugene would come out there and he'd imitate the wrestlers that he watched growing up. He'd deliver a stunner or a rock bottom or a people's elbow or whatever, and the crowd loved it. He got really hot really fast. He ended up, you know, unfortunately having drug issues and all that. So, um, you know, it didn't work out. But boy, Eugene was hot for a while. And, you know, I, I don't know if something like that would fly today, um, but boy, the, the crowd loved it. They loved it because it was a very heartwarming, easy to get behind story. I remember the coach, Jonathan Coachman, berating him on Raw. The Rock returned and helped him at that point. I mean, anyway, I'm going into the uh, the ether. But if you guys don't know who Eugene is, for those of you who are newer fans out there, check it out. You won't believe it. I'm not saying you're going to be offended by it, but just how far and how much things have changed in just 20 years. So. All right, Freeman. I know that had nothing to do with your question, but. <laughs> oh, shoot. All right. All right, Dino. Let's go. Uh, from Scotland, he said, let's go. He said, um, we don't have many of those email or, oh, okay, I got you. So let's go. You got a little bit of lengthy email, but you're going, you're in Scotland. So I'll let you, I'll let, I'll let this pass. All right. So it's your first ever PLE, so forgive me. Plus, my predictions get straight to the point. All right, it's only my prediction in the main event that's a bit lengthy, so forgive me. All right, all right. So I'm giving your prediction, or you're giving me your predictions based on what you think the actual order of the matches will be, and you know the show is going to be on fire to keep the fan interested, and that the PLEs there usually start big and end big, okay? First, I think that you're going to get underway with AJ Styles and Cody Rhodes in the I Quit match. And uh, especially given it's only five matches on the card in total, I, I that you send this email. <clears throat> um, Cody will retain, however, like we all, however, like we all expect him to. Realistically, I give AJ Styles like a 0.1 percent chance of leaving Scotland with the championship. The second is Bailey versus Piper Niven for the SmackDown Women's Championship, with Bailey retaining in about 12 minutes. Oh wow, you're actually giving timestamps. This is I don't know if anyone's ever done that. Ballsy. Next. 
We'll have Sami Zayn versus Chad Gable for the IC title. This one's going to be a 20-minute classic with Otis finally turning on Chad, costing him the match and helping him, helping Sami retain. The second to last match is Jade versus B- Jade and Bianca versus Baszler and Stark versus Alba Fire and Isla Dawn, the Unholy Alliance. This, I think, will run about 10 minutes with Jade and Bianca retaining. Okay, and then in the main event, we'll see Damian Priest walk into enemy territory a la John Cena Money in the Bank 2011 versus CM Punk vibes. Yeah, I gotcha. To take on Drew with, of course, Drew McIntyre and home soil. So you're thinking it's going to be a 20-minute match with Drew becoming the new ch- uh, world champion. And you do think the ending has to be has the potential to be overbooked. Although Judgment Day is barred from ringside, we have seen in the past this rule being disregarded because, you know, if anyone loves breaking their own rules, it's the WWE. Anyway, I think the finish will be this. JD, Finn, and Dom come to the aid of Priest, but unbeknownst to everyone, Drew brought his own back up in the form of Gallus. Gallus? Who the hell's Gallus? Who, am I missing something? Seamus? Are you saying Seamus, maybe? I'm lost. I don't know who Gallus is. J, G-A-L-L-U-S? I don't know. Uh, show up to neutralize JD, Finn, and Dom, and then CM Punk shows up and tries to screw Drew again, and then his music hits. It's only... Uh, it's only freaking Joe Henry. I don't, who are these people? <laughs> Am I just pronouncing it wrong? I have a history of that too. Who's okay. Now you've named two people that I don't have a clue who they are. Gallus and Joe Henry. I don't know, but let's, let's go. I'll, I'll play this out. So you think Joe Henry comes out and to the aid of punk, thus leaving drew to take the win clean. Realistically, this is probably fantasy booking, but there's a chance that Joe Hendry and Gallus show up because they're both Scottish. But I do also know, based on this, that Pat McAfee's hinting at Joe Henry when he said, quote, say his name and he appears. So you never know. By the way, for those who don't know the phrase, say his name and he appears, is Joe Henry's catchphrase. He's re- relatively unknown to American WWE fans, but he's an exciting talent currently in TNA. I'm sure we all know now that WWE and TNA have a partnership with one another. With this, I don't think we can get Uncle Howdy at the end of the show. With the latest QR code on Raw being a clock countdown to the start of Raw this Monday, we're going to miss out on the debut by less than two days, which is heartbreaking. Oh, okay. So yeah, I didn't even look at the QR code. I do think, however, that we are now going to be eating good from now until the uh, until Till the second dull period of the, the year, which is November until January, uh, from just after Survivor Series until a few weeks before the Rumble. Quick point on Joe Henry. Do you guys know that he writes and performs his own songs and makes his own gear? Everyone should check him out. I never had any of, I never heard of the guy this time last week, but I've become a little obsessed with him and his current song, quote, I believe in Joe Henry, went to number one in the UK charts. You can find him on Spotify. I'm really digging it. Okay. Hey, I never heard of him in my life. I didn't know he made music. This guy is a mystery to me. Now, with it being international PLE, I expect the show to run about two hours and 45 minutes uh, using the WWE Network for both Backlash France and King and Queen of the Ring. They were both two hours and 51 minutes. Interestingly, Survivor Series War Games last November ran for two hours and 49 minutes, so I'm expecting Clash to be similar. So, quick breakdown. One hour and 27 minutes in total for all five matches. 15 minutes in total for video packages, three minutes for each match. And 25 minutes for entrances, five minutes each match, both superstars' entrances combined. That's a total of two hours and seven minutes, leaving 42 minutes of spare time for backstage and any surprise promos. One of which I'm really hoping and praying will be Jay Uso. Maybe John Cena will randomly show up like he did at Money in the Bank last year. Can you imagine if The Rock decided to show up and surprise us? I doubt it, but if you've seen his Instagram, you'll know he's currently in Paris, France, which is only a two-hour flight from Glasgow. But, again, like I said, I doubt it. My final thoughts are that, if I'm, in my opinion, one thing Triple H has brought back is that feeling of, quote, anything could happen. Speak to you all in the next week's mailbag for my full clash and the uh, Scotland reaction an in-person review. Yeah, looking forward to it, uh, buddy. I'm looking forward to it, Dino. Uh, good stuff. I mean, you are breaking it down into a fine powder, my friend. You are grinding it right down and doing minutes. I've really never seen minutes in predictions, so good for you. Well, you know, you'll have to uh, fact-check yourself after everything's done. 
<laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't think you're getting the rock. Sorry. <sighs> okay. My gosh, my gosh, my gosh. We got uh, two more patrons. This is James, and he says, hope everyone's doing well. You'll, you'll be headed to Clash on Saturday and thought you'd drop an email with predictions. Okay, let's, what are your predictions, James? As much as I would love Alba Fire and Isla Dawn to win, I can't see past Jade and Bianca winning as this will lead to a feud between the pair and they will eventually split. I do like Shayna and Stark as a team and hope creative stick with them as a team going forward as they would make great women's champs. Chad and Sammy, I feel this is the hardest one to predict out of the card. Both guys will have, have valid reasons or do have valid reasons to win. But I feel in terms of story, the title would be better on Chad. They could have Chad feud with Otis for a pay-per-view or two. As much as I love Sammy, I feel he's got a, a, a stale, a little stale. Bailey versus Piper Niven. This should be the uh, win for Bailey, but I just hope that creative allows Piper to express herself in the ring and get some offense and really push Bailey close. Okay. Cody and AJ Styles. I think this will be a great match. Both men are an excellent in the ring, and I really enjoy their match at Backlash. I just can't see Cody dropping the belt before WrestleMania. And then finally, Drew and Damian. I'm Drew all the way in this match, but expect Priest to be heavily booed during this man, uh, entrance and when he's on offense. The roof will blow off the place if Drew manages to win. Also, just a heads up, expect to hear a lot of ICW chants, especially during the Scottish wrestlers. Uh, and as the IC, ICW is the independent wrestling circuit where all these guys were made before the WWE. Have a great weekend, James in Scotland. Well, James, enjoy the show first and foremost. I really hope that uh, it's everything you want it to be and that you, <laughs> it's not cheap to go. So I hope that, you know, it's money well spent. Um, you know, it's, uh, I expect a lot of chance. I expect a lot of chance that I'm going to sit there and go like a lot of U.S. fans going, what the hell are they saying? <laughs> it's a lot of it's gonna be a lot of that but we expect that um I, I just hope it doesn't take away from the matches in the ring where it's a lot of unrelated stuff that's being chanted like the happened in leon france where it just felt like the fans only cared about their own chance and didn't give a crap about what's going on in the ring and it, that's the way it felt to me so you know um i mean you guys do what you want but um you know, there's gonna be a lot of just head scratching especially if you're from the united states just which is where a lot of and most of the fans are, they're going to sit there and go, wait, what What in the hell are they saying? <laughs> you know, we're going to need subtitles. All right. Thanks, James. Enjoy. All right, DJ, let's get to you. I didn't forget you. He says, DJ Cozwell back at it again on the Mailbag Show. Here we go. It's another PLE week as we gear up for Clash, another international PLE that I'll be not watching live because of the time zone difference. You and me too, buddy. Yeah, you and me both, I was going to say. All right. Let's get to them. DJ Kuzmo clash at the castle predictions and some slight spoilers. All right. Triple threat match. Women's tag team titles. All right. What do you think, DJ? So you're predicting that the current champs of Jade and Bianca will retain. It seems like the women's tag team championship curse is definitely gone, but it's yet to be seen how long Jade and Bianca would remain as champions, even though they're doing a really good job representing the women's tag team division on a consistent basis. Number two. <clears throat> excuse me, Bailey versus Piper Niven for the women's championship. I'm predicting that Bailey will retain the championship against Piper in her home country, but I'm not thrilled about Bailey's championship reign. Hopefully that changes after this PLE heading into money in the bank. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Number three, Cody Rhodes and AJ Styles. I quit match for the WWE championship. I'm predicting that Cody will retain. I like AJ's chances of potentially winning the match, even if it's if it gets outside help from the OC, like Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. The feud could possibly continue for a third match at Money in the Bank if some sort of triple threat happens, or they might have a championship match on SmackDown instead. All right, now the final two matches that could possibly have some very interesting outcomes. <clears throat> Sami Zayn and Chad Gable. All right, what do you got here? So first I will say that Sami Zayn will retain. For the main reason that this feud and story has been several weeks centered on Chad and Otis, and when Otis, and when will Otis snap at Gable? I think it's possible that Otis, Otis finally snaps at Gable during this match on Saturday, costing Gable to get pinned by Sammy. However, you can make the case for Chad to win, since his obsession for trying to win the championship has gone back to when Gunther was champion and Creative was doing a great job with Gable. In my opinion, he's the most deserving to become the new Intercontinental Champion. 
uh, than Sammy, but I'm sticking with Sammy to retain as I continue to debate with myself. Yeah, it sounds like you're you were debating. We we got your internal debate put into words. <laughs> That's what we said. I felt like I was inside your head, DJ. It, it is a struggle. This is a very difficult match. Um, and also, has there been anyone ever who has challenged more for the Intercontinental Title and never won it? How many times has Chad challenged for the IC belt in his career and never won? I don't believe he's won. But I, I also said last time that the demon Finn Balor's character we haven't seen since, you know, Bray Wyatt was around during the pandemic era. And someone's like, no, 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 you appeared at WrestleMania. So, you know, hey, I, I, I make up crap all the time. All right. Uh, let's go. Last one here. Damien and uh, Drew for the title. In another debate with myself, I'm trying to figure out how it's going to win. I'm predicting that none other than Damian Priest will retain. Wow. For the main reason of the credibility of the title. Since Priest won the championship at WrestleMania in seven seconds, he's only had one championship defense in his brief reign as champ. And in my opinion, it would not be fair in the booking of Priest, which has been really good in terms of creative, building up to Priest to look strong as the champion amongst the chaos that is happening in the Judgment Day. The long game, in my opinion, is Priest versus Gunther and McIntyre versus Punk at SummerSlam and not another Priest versus McIntyre match. However, you can make the case for Drew to win. Since, one, he lost to Roman two years ago at Clash because of Solo Sokoa, so that, that's the historical aspect. And two, Drew is in his home country of Scotland, which obviously makes him the babyface in this match against Priest. If Priest somehow retains, it has to be with no CM Punk interference. However, if, Punk, or if Drew wins... It could be via outside distraction or help from Dirty Dom, Finn, or the women's champion, Liv Morgan, who doesn't even have a match. How weird is that? Um, anyway, DJ Cosmo signing off. Enjoy Clash. See you all in the Discord for Friday Night SmackDown, which is happening right now as I record this. Okay. All right. Well, I, again, my predictions are coming in just a minute. I, I promise. They really are. I promise it's because uh, it's hard for me to respond to these since it would uh, kind of defeat the purpose of giving my own preview and prediction show. All right, let's get to those preview and predictions, though. Let's do it. All right. I know I'm ready. You guys are ready. It's not going to be a revolutionary, uh, you know, a revolutionary uh, prediction show, but I want to give you my thoughts. So let's do it. I'm going to go in the same match as DJ or order as DJ here. And no, this is not in the same order. I believe they'll have their matches. I'm not getting into that level of detail. Um, but let's go. The women's tag team titles, they got to stay on Jade and Bianca. The reason I say they have to is what are you going to do with Alba Fire and Isla Dawn? They, they, I mean, it's nice to see them in the, in the mix. It's nice to see them become relevant, but their character development is still at an all time low. And same with uh, Zoe Stark and, um, and Shayna Baszler, who, I mean, they're as cold as cold can be. They have no, less character development, believe it or not, than Alba Fire and Isla Dawn do, which is saying something, at least as of late. So, I mean, Jade and Bianca still feel like they're just getting their 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 uh, you know their wheels going here. It feels like they're just starting to take off, and when they lose those belts, to me, that should be the signal that they're about to you know have a have a program with one another. So, there's no need to change the, the titles right now. Um, I think they're doing a nice job. It's a nice place for Jade to be. I know Bianca doesn't need to be doing this, and she belongs to be a single star. She is helping out Jade immensely, um, and I think it's it's good for everyone that they stay champions. Just in a, in a real sense for Jade, she needs the support. She needs that sit under the learning tree of one of the best that WWE has in Bianca Belair. All right, Bailey versus Piper Niven for the women's title. Yeah, this one is a zero chance that Piper Niven wins. Nearly zero. Bailey, I'm also a bit just kind of disappointed in her run thus far. Um, Kind of matches the build to her match at WrestleMania with Io Sky. It's like, where is Bailey? I mean, she was forgotten after she won the Rumble. And they killed it at WrestleMania, but then she's forgotten again after she wins the belt. Bailey needs mic time. She needs to build herself or let WWE allow her to go on to the mic. Hell, make a video package about Bailey. Remind people who and what she is. Um, now she's still a star, and people still react to her, but she's not where I think I think she should be. And Piper Niven, you know what? I think she's going to get some fun, uh, have some fun moments in this match. Uh, you know, I expect probably a few botches here and there, but it's not going to be the match of the night. But I expect it to be a breakout re- uh, performance for Piper Niven, and I expect Bailey to retain here after a very hard fought. Uh, 
grinded out match. You could see, uh, you know, uh, Chelsea Green. She probably will show up in some capacity, but Bailey's going to win. Okay, let's go to the I Quit match. I'll I'll go with you here, DJ. Cody Rhodes, yeah, he wins. There's just no chance AJ wins. None. Just like their last match. But that doesn't mean we don't want to see them. You know, their, their last match at Backlash was, I mean, as we all know, amazing. And I think they have a repeat, repeat performance here. Even if you have Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, I think they'll be neutralized. I'm not worried about it. Uh, you know, you're going to have, you know, Cody Rhodes at his best, AJ at his best, and AJ's eventually going to say, I quit. You can't, how in the hell could you have the guy that is Mr. Never Quit and, and, and you know, Scratch and Claw, all of a sudden he wins the belt from Roman and he's the one who says, I quit. You can't do it. There is a n- zero out of every match on the entire card. This is the one that I would bet that Cody Rhodes uh, retains the championship in or wins. But, and again, I expect a bust ass match, physical match, physical as hell. And it's really meant to, to, to uh, show you how tough Cody is, right? Cause they're going to put him in some very precarious positions where he's beaten down to a pulp. Maybe AJ Styles brings in, like I said, uh, Luke Gowles and Carl Anderson. Cody Rhodes is just demolished. Maybe he even has a little blood, something like that. And you're thinking, oh my God, Cody has just, he has to quit here. And he doesn't. And you're like, wow. You know, it's supposed to, I think, increase the toughness factor of how we view Cody. That's what this is. It's supposed to masculinize him, maybe for those that are complaining he's too feminine like myself yeah that's not gonna happen i mean there's nothing they can do in this match to make me change my how i feel because guess what monday night raw he's gonna be coming out with his manicure and his perfectly placed bleach blonde hair and his stupid smile that's been you know crest white stripped i I, you know all that stupid crap so this does nothing for me if that's the goal to pretend that he's tougher than he is or whatever sorry (laughs) but cody rhodes wins in a very good match i would anticipate all right but yes dj I'm with you. These next two matches are very difficult to predict. And I like how we have, finally, now that we're, we're past WrestleMania far enough that you can start to look at some matches and go, hmm, you know, this isn't such a lock it up and throw away the key decision. Like Sami Zayn and Chad Gable, this one, it, it leans Sami for me, but you have Otis out there who has been, the fans have been clamoring for him to turn on Chad and the fans are waiting and wanting it to happen. And it hasn't happened yet. And you're thinking, Oh, perfect opportunity. Otis is going to screw Chad here. Finally turn on him, And Sammy Zayn retains. That seems too easy. It seems too easy to do. It's too perfectly placed. I am going to go Chad Gable winning with the help of Otis. Maybe by accident uh, or intentional, but Otis is going to have the deciding factor here. He's going to be the the wild card for Chad retaining, or winning, rather. And plus, Sammy as Intercontinental Champion has been kind of boring. You know, it's just the way it is. It's been blah. Sami Zayn screams in every single promo he has, which I think is a... Well, he's content, he's good. He's just... He screams too much, which... I think detracts from his, his promos, but uh, I think Chad is poised to win here. He has been on the rise. He's the hot hand. Sammy's not right now. He wasn't even going into WrestleMania. People wanted Chad Gable to win. Remember? We wanted Chad. Sammy got a ton of heat for winning that match against Chad Gable for, for, the, for the right to face Gunther at WrestleMania. So people have wanted Chad for a long time. I think they finally pulled the trigger here. While it does, this, the money leans Sammy, I think Chad is going to win, and I think it's going to be because of Otis, intentionally or not, and you'll build to a Chad-Otis uh, maybe split towards SummerSlam. Maybe they'll string it out, but I, the, obviously the risk with that is that people at that point won't even care. You know, like they're just going to say, if, if Otis doesn't have enough respect for himself at this point, and I'm not going to want him, I'm not going to watch him get humiliated week after week for the next two months until SummerSlam. You know, so there does come a point where you got to pull the trigger. And maybe the fans stick with him, maybe they don't, but I think Chad Gable should win here. 
Drew and Damien. All right. This is tough. This is really tough. I mean, what I want to happen and what I think will happen are two different things here. My gut tells me that Drew's going to win. And I think they should have him win. I think they should have him win because on a real life uh, real life perspective from a real life perspective Drew deserves this not in a meta sense or rather a, a storyline sense character sense real life he deserves this moment what better moment can you give to Drew after the crap he went through during the pandemic having to deal with winning the title for the first time in front of no one getting screwed, quote-unquote, in story, at WrestleMania, all that, to only have him finally win the world title in front of his home country. There is no better way to repay him on an actual real-life level than to give him in-person fans who are going insane for him than in, in winning a world title in front of his friends, his family, and his home country. I think they should do it. Do I think they're going to? I have I have trouble believing it because Damien has overachieved. Damien has done a very nice job being champion. I wouldn't hate if he retained. To me, this is not a win-win. I don't really... I, I think Drew as champion is more fun because then you could go Punk and Drew and Punk is challenging for the world title, maybe at Money in the Bank or SummerSlam and all that. Yeah, you could. And Damien could insert himself, and you can make it a three-way for Money in the Bank, and then well, you could do a lot of stuff, right? But Damien himself has overachieved. He's actually felt like a world champion in, in a way that I didn't think it was going to be. You know, he won it, and you're like, eh, transitional. He'll drop it quick, and that'll be that. But Damien has felt like a champion, and in keeping the world title on him, as the de facto leader while Rhea's gone of the Judgment Day, there's something to be said for that too. He's the leader. He's the champion. He's calling the shots while everyone else falls apart. It's been fun. Surprisingly fun. And so there's a case to be made for Damien. Ultimately, what do I think? I think Drew, I think Drew probably wins. That he finally gets that moment. But the question is, are, is WWE ballsy enough to bring in CM Punk in front of a hostile crowd for anyone and anything that opposes Drew McIntyre? Do they dare bring in CM Punk? They can't, right? They can't. I don't even care if it's after the match. If it's after the match, they're still going to boo Punk because they know he's opposing Drew right now and he's going to be coming for the title that Drew has. There is nothing you can do right with Punk in Scotland. Nothing. If you care about him getting booed. If you don't care and you're just going to forge ahead and say, screw the fans, and uh, it'll all work out when they get back to the States and the fans will come back to, to Punk, which I wouldn't bet on too too you know too quickly, but it's likely then sure, go ahead. Let him get booed. Let him get booed into oblivion. Have Punk screw Drew again and uh, see how the fans land and just hope it doesn't throw your whole storyline into a tailspin because Punk isn't just going to get mildly booed. It's not going to be 50-50. It's going to be nuclear heat. It's going to be John Cena, uh, 2006 ECW one-night stand opposing Rob Van Dam bad. I'm telling you. I know that some some people, oh, he's a big star. He's a big star that they haven't seen. No, no. That doesn't matter. Nothing matters. Nothing will matter. Nothing and no one will matter except Drew and him winning. So, sure, a part of me wants to see what happens, how badly Punk gets booed if they have him come out and screw Drew McIntyre, Damien retains, and <laughs> see what the people do. Uh, so, anyway, it's going to be an interesting PLE. 
two matches that are absolutely up for grabs, and I'm not confident in either of them. Um, you know, it's going to be a fun, loud event. You already know that. Uh, very good quality wrestling, which has been an earmark of the, the Triple H era thus far. Shorter uh, number of matches, but longer matches has always been my preference, and Triple H has given that to us so far. So I expect nothing different here. I don't expect any big returns or re-debuts or anything like that. I think that's going to be safe for Monday Night Raw and beyond. But uh, yeah, no Rock, no Roman. Um, yeah, I don't think Charlotte's coming back yet. Although I could see Charlotte returning at the PLE. She's been MIA for a while, and uh, I think that she could be slated for a return here against maybe Bailey or opposing whatever. But it's very possible. But uh, anyway. Hope all of you enjoy the PLE. If you want ad-free shows, including the ad-free version of our uh, review show for the PLE, head over to patreon.com slash WWE podcast because it gets you an ad-free experience. And it's also free for seven days. So you can get everything for free and then cancel on us. And then you get everything and I get nothing, right? <laughs> it's nothing like a free trial to get what you want and, and then leave. It's like being able to steal from a store without getting charged, right? Pretty good, pretty good gig, but... Uh, that's obviously available too if you want to check us out, but also at Patreon or uh, Apple Podcasts for ad free as well. And uh, there's a Discord server for those of you that join on Patreon, so you can chat with all the other patrons over at Patreon.com during the PLE, during live events, during uh, whatever, any time of day or night. That chat is always open. All right, that'll do it for me, everybody. I'll be back. Uh, Sunday. I'll be back for Sunday when your weekend review, which is really just going to be a uh, Clash at the Castle review and reaction show. So looking forward to that. Enjoy the PLE, everybody. Enjoy the weekend. Happy Father's Day to those of you who it applies to. And uh, take care. Talk next time. Thanks for listening to the WWE Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show or head to wwepodcast.com and for all of these shows ad free head over to patreon.com slash wwe podcast until then we'll see you next time